sauce. to continue our reading practice. We're going to start off with a new story that we haven't gone through yet, and then we'll review the other two stories that we have been practicing um, the weeks prior to, okay? So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to come grab a clipboard, a pencil, and I will pass out your books. Go ahead. Again. All right. As we are reading along, I want you guys to make sure that you are following along so that we know exactly where we are in the story. Pay attention to who the characters are, what the setting is, and what the main idea of the story is. Okay? We'll go through the questions together, like always, and then we'll review. All right, so the first story is called Lace Around the Sky. Everyone should be on that page. Okay, let's follow along. Catalina stood on the doorstep of the Cerro Tololo Observatory staff housing, drinking in deep lungfuls of the clear night air under the blazing southern hemisphere starshine. The Milky Way sprawled across the sky, a swarth of pure white lace shadowed by dark blotches. Now, we're gonna pause there. There's a lot of cool information here. What did you pick up just on this first paragraph? Did we find a character? Did we find a setting? Who did you find? Catalina. Catalina. Catalina, Catalina is a a name, which is also a cat. Catalina. Catalina. What do we call the people in the story? Characters. Characters. Perfect. So Catalina is our character. What's the setting like? They described a beautiful setting. Can somebody tell me what the setting is? It's a night time. What else? Is it a dark night? No. Night? Oh, stars are out? It's a dark night. And if you can see the stars, that means that it's what? Dark or clear? Dark. Clear. Clear. Look back at your information. It says drinking in deep lungfuls of what? Clear night air. Clear night air. All right, good. Um, second paragraph. Night was her favorite time. During the day, the Chilean mountain top swarmed with tourists, shouting and calling to each other as breezes spun dust into the thin mountain air. While the visitors were there, Papa could not allow her to help. Is there another character? Papa. Papa. Papa's another character. And they actually told you the place where this story takes place, the setting. Look, during the day, the what? On the second paragraph, the first line, the first sentence. Oh, the area. Try it. Chilean. Chilean. Mountain what? Top. Mountain top. Chilean mountain top. That gives you a clue. What country do we know that starts with Chile? Warren. There's a country and it's called cool. Chile. Do you know about that country? Ch 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 no. no. Chile? Not okay. Well, that is that is um, our setting. All right. So mm -hmm. we have a new character and we know exactly where they are. Ch uh, paragraph three. But at night, when everything was quiet, 
Catalina was one of the few who were allowed beyond the roped off corridors and the no admittance sign, the night staff all knew her. What does no admittance mean? What do you think it means? What does no mean? No. 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 Admittance means to be able to en in enter into a place. place. So what does that mean? No admittance. You're not you can't to come to be able to enter the place. Mm -hmm. You cannot enter. But she was the only one, right? Yeah. Why? Look at the last young. sentence. Oh, okay. What does the last sentence say on paragraph three? Um, the knife staff. Wait, oh, okay. uh huh. The, the knife right. staff knew her. The knife staff knew her. So if somebody knows you, do you think that you'll be able to go in places? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, if they yeah. know you. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Paragraph four. She loved helping to service the grand telescope, the eyes that peered out into the universe, even if it was annoying how she was always told not to disturb the astronomers who directed the telescopes through the night. Catalina wanted more than anything to confess her secret dream to these great and revered scientists. Go ahead and flip your page. Paragraph five. Are we ready? Yes. When she said, Papa, I want to be an astronomer someday, he laughed and tugged at one of her long black braids. <laughs> but Catalina was curious. The sky did not merely consist of white dots of stars against a black background. The sky she saw every night was knotted with patterns from fuzzy balls of fluffy of fluff to in to filament. No one believed she would be a scientist one day, but why? She knew she could be a good scientist. She knew it. So pause and think about this. Have you ever been in a situation where you know you can do something, but the people around you kind of don't agree that you can? No. You've never been in a situation like that? I have. You have, have Devin? How does that feel? Yes, sir. Yeah, it doesn't Wait, feel good, right? Sister, oh, wow. A situation where you know that you can do something, you know yourself, like you have confidence in yourself, but the people around you don't believe that you can do that. Oh, yeah. It makes you feel bad, right? Okay. So that's exactly how Catalina feels right now. She danced along the dirt road. We're on paragraph eight. She danced along the dirt road, bare feet, soundless against the gravel. A practice eye scanning the half dozen domes at the mountain top summit. Then she stood suddenly. The one meter telescope's dome slit was open, but its angle was unusual. Cautiously, she wandered near. The telescope was pointed down, almost at the ground, lower than she had ever seen it. Number nine. She bit her lip, shifting from foot to foot. The red light over the entrance door indicated that it was forbidden to enter and disturb the scientists at work. What does the word forbidden mean? Don't go in there. Okay, yeah. no. It means not to do it, right? Like you are not allowed ever to do that. So just by the information that we know about this character, Catalina, what do we think? Do you think that she's going to go for it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see if we're right. Number 10. Something was wrong. She was sure of it. So taking a deep breath, she turned the handle and slipped inside. Were we right? Yeah. yeah. Number 12. She took a cautious step forward and saw an irregular shape hunched on the floor. She inhaled sharply. It was a man. Coming closer, she saw that one leg was bent under him at an awkward angle. Senor, she whispered, are you all right? The man groaned. Fell, he grasped in his accent, accented Spanish, gesturing at the platform above. I think broke leg. Catalina balanced on the balls of her feet. 
I'll run and get the night operator, she promised, already backing towards the door. No, his voice was sharp. First, need to fix the telescope. Catalina's eyes lifted to the clock drive, lifted to the clock drive, lit by a blinking yellow light. She had often helped her father reset this device. Quickly, she walked to the con to the controller and flipped the two switches her father used to stop the telescope. So up until this point, what is going on? She, she found a man with a broken leg. She found a man with a, what it looked like a broken leg. What's going on now? She needs to figure out something that she can do, right, to help this man and fix the telescope because he says that the telescope is what? Broken. 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 The man behind her was grasping out directions, gasping out directions. Shh, it's all right, she stuttered. She soothed, coming to his side. I fixed it. No more problems, okay? You what? He muttered, confused. Already? Then his head lolled to one side. Catalina jumped to her feet. Her braids jumped her back, thumped her back rhythmically as she ran all the way to the night operator's office. Senor Rojas, there's an emergency, she called out as the big man swiveled his feet up wooden chair to face her. The astronomer using the one meter had an accident. He fell and broke his leg. You need to get help. Later that night, Catalina crouched behind one of the junction boxes as the astronomer was carried out on a stretcher. Wait, he called as he was about to be loaded into the ambulance. Wait, Catalina, how did you know, he asked. Know what, she whispered, puzzled. That something was wrong. She stuffed the dirt with her toe. Um, I saw the barrel pointing down and I knew it wasn't normal. His eyes sharpened. That was observant of you. Shyly, she nodded. He get, his gaze remained on her as they lifted the stretcher and began to slide it into the ambulance. A good scientist, he continued, is always observant. That night, when she ran out under the stars, she called, I'll discover all your secrets someday, circling above her, that Intri intricate sky no longer seemed quite so remote. All right, by the end of this story, what did this guy call her? What does she want to be when she grows up? A scientist. Did she get someone to finally say that she could be a scientist? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Why? She believed in herself? But she did something here that proved to them that she is a real scientist. What did she do? She fixed the telescope. The telescope. One of the things that we see here in the story is that he, he says over here on, go to paragraph 31. Check on paragraph 31. Read it in your brain and try to figure out the answer. What does he call her? Why does he call her a scientist? Mm. Paragraph 31, look at the last sentence. Look at the last sentence. It starts with a she good scientist. Out the stars. No. Go to paragraph 31. Uh, look at the last sentence. It starts with a good scientist. Look what oh. he says after. Observation. Observe. Observe it. A good scientist is always observant. Observant. What does observant mean? Good. Yeah, but what does it mean? What are you doing? Um, when you're being observant. When you're observing. Watch. You are what, Devin? Watch. You are watching what's happening, right? And taking mental notes as to what is going on. Good job. Go ahead and flip your page and let's look at the questions. Okay. Question number two says, which sentence 
From the story, Bess describes Catalina's main conflict. I'm going to read it again. Which sentence from the story best describes Catalina's main conflict? Letter F. While the visitors were there, Papa could not allow her to help. Does that talk about a conflict? No, not really. Conflict means problem. So, in other words, what was Catalina's main problem? So, listen to F. While the visitors were there, Papa could not allow her to help. Does that tell me anything about a problem? No. But is it a problem because he's not letting her help? No. Yeah, so why don't we put a little question mark next to that one? Because it could become a problem, right? Yeah. All right. Look at letter D. No one believed she would be a good scientist one day. Is that a problem? That no one believes that she could be a scientist? Yeah. Yeah? It, it sure does. All right, we'll leave that one alone. Letter H. Catalina balanced on the balls of her feet. Is that a problem? No. Go ahead and cross that out. <laughs> Letter J. Catalina's eyes lifted to the clock drive lit by a blinking yellow light. Is that a problem? No. Hey, Devin, why don't you go back there and grab a band-aid? Okay, so going back to the two choices, which one fits better? G. G. No one believed she would be a scientist one day. G would be your answer. All right, let's look at number five. How does Catalina's observation of the telescope in paragraph eight advance the plot of the story? I'm going to read it one more time. How does Catalina's observation of the telescope in paragraph eight advance the plot of the story? So, Today, because we are using paper, we're going to have to go back to paragraph number eight. But since you guys are going to be taking STAR online, you guys will be able to click on paragraph eight right above the question, and you can read it there or have it read to you, okay, through the computer. So let's all go back to paragraph eight, which is on page five, and let's see what paragraph eight talks about. So in the question, we see, how does Catalina's observation of the telescope in paragraph 8 advance the plot of the story? Observation means what again? Of it. What we... I hope. Nope. What we... Oh, see. What we see, right? Observation. Observant. Remember those two words. Okay. Let's look at the, uh, paragraph 8. She danced along the dirt road. Bare feet, soundless against the gravel. A practiced eye scanning the half dozen domes at the mountaintop summit. Look at that eye scanning. Eye scanning. What do you do when you're eye scanning? Um, looking. You're looking. You're looking. You're looking. Right. You're you're looking in detail for things. All right. Then she stopped suddenly. The one meter telescope's dome slit was open. What did she see? The telescope's dome slit was oh, oh, it was what? Open. Oh, open. Yeah. So was that normal? No. no. But its angle was unusual. Look at that. Angle was unusual. She's and then it says cautiously she wandered nearer. The telescope was pointing down, almost at the ground, lower than she had ever seen it. So does that raise concern? Yeah. It does, because she's never seen it facing down to the ground, right? If you have a telescope, is it facing the ground? No. Where is it facing? Uh, the sky. So would that kind of be like, huh, what's going on? Yeah. All right, let's look at our choices. A, 
It allows Catalina to express her feelings about scientific discovery. Does that talk about how she feels? No. No, we can cross that out. B, it leads Catalina to identify a problem that she will resolve. No. You don't think she saw a problem? Maybe. Maybe we can put a little question mark there. C, it hints that Catalina's actions will cause the main conflict. No. Not really. What about D? It suggests that Catalina is unfamiliar with observation observatory. No. No. Because she knows a lot about the observatory, right? Yep. What was our answer there? D. B. B was your best choice. Mm -hmm. All right, good job. We are not done yet. Oh. Okay. okay. Now we're going to review peace and quiet. So you should be very familiar with this story, okay? And we will also review Maple Street. All right, here we go. Peace and quiet. I read Maple Street before. What? I read Maple Street before. Really? So you know a real life Maple Street? Yeah. Kind of. All right, peace and quiet. I heard across the grass to the forest edge. My shoulders relaxed as I followed the pine needle path to my favorite spot. A grouping of large rocks beneath a giant evergreen tree. Heaving a sigh of relief, I sat down on my special rock. In the distance, I could see our house, but I knew that no one would know where to look for me. At last, I had peace and quiet. I lifted my guitar onto my knees and pressed my fingers onto the strings. I strummed and started to sing. Lean on me when you're not strong. I moved my fingers to try to find the next chord and strummed again. Ugh, oh, that sounds terrible, I mumbled. I played the first chord and sang again. Lean on me. I, gr I grinced in frustration when I struck the wrong chord. Why can't I get this song right? I wondered out loud. How's it going, Desha? Startled, I glanced over my shoulder and saw my brother James standing there. Don't you have a basketball game to watch? I complained. So much for my perfect hideaway. Pause there. What's going on? She can't sing at that moment, right? What is she doing? She's trying her best. Trying her best. Where is she? In her room. Is she in her room? Outside. She's outside somewhere, right? In the very first paragraph, it gives us it gives us information about where this person might be. Look at the last sentence on paragraph one. A grouping of large rocks beneath a giant evergreen tree. Giant evergreen trees, are they inside or outside? Outside. What kind of outside are we talking about? The forest. Kind of like a forest, right? Yeah. Do we know the character's name already? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Desha. 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 And we know another character right away. Who's the other character? Uh, James. James. Good job. All right. Um. We're in paragraph nine. <laughs> the game was almost over when I noticed you left. I thought you might like some company. Company is the last thing I want. Can I have a little peace and quiet? Oops. I left the house to escape you guys. I felt my throat tightening up. James studied me for a moment. It's tough having such a big family, isn't it? Everyone's so nosy and always prying into my business. Yesterday, I found Elisa looking through my journal, and now everyone is in the living room watching the game. All I wanted to do was watch a movie. But when I went into my room, Sarah was there listening to the radio. I just want to be alone for a change. Do we have a new character in here? No. Nina. Who? Nina. 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 Just Nina. It's a Nina. All I wanted to do was watch a movie, but when I went into my room, on paragraph 12, 
Elisa. Uh huh. And then towards the bottom, we have another name. Sarah. Sarah. There you go. James sighed as he sat on a rock. I felt the same way when I was your age, he said. But now, now you have your own room. A trace of bitterness crept, crept, crept into my voice. Once Daniel went off to college, you didn't have to share anymore. James chuckled. It is great to have my own room, but sometimes I really miss Daniel. We used to talk about everything at night. Sports, school, friends, you name it. As crowded as it seemed at times, it was actually kind of comforting to have someone else there. Yeah, crowded is right. I couldn't help but grin. We are stuffed like feathers in a pillow in that house. Are they really stuffed like feathers? No. Ow. I know, James said laughing, but there are some good things that come out of it. We share memories and jokes no one else understands. And when things get tough, we can always count on one another for support. I sighed, running my hand along my guitar. Didn't Sarah stay up half the night with you last week, helping you with your homework, James asked. I shrugged and admitted unwillingly, yeah, sometimes she can be all right. So this spot here, James said, glancing around, this can be your room anytime you really need a solitary place. Just come out here. I won't tell anybody about it. Doesn't matter. It seems everyone can find it, I said. Only if you know where to look, James replied, patting the rock he was sitting on. I've known about it for a while. I looked to the side of James' knee and saw the initials, JDP, etched into the stone. James Dawson Pruitt, I said. James smiled. We're on paragraph 26. <laughs> Are you following along? Make sure you're following along. This is a great spot for getting away. Now, how about that guitar chord you were trying to find? You know guitar co chords? I raised my eyebrows. Sure, I played some guitar before I went for the drums, Jim said. I still remember the basics. Here, let me try. I hesitated for a moment. And when I handed my brother the guitar, I thought, maybe family isn't so bad after all. So, what was going on here? She was talking about half of what I was going to say. So, who, who is she? Who's this character? It starts with a D. Oh, yeah. Desha. 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 So Desha wanted some what? Help. Peace. Peace, Peace and quiet. quiet. So she went out to where? The forest. To the forest. To do what? What was she practicing? Her guitar. She's practicing her guitar. Was she able to get the chords? Yeah. No, she was struggling a little bit. Who came to talk to her? Yes. Brother, James. what's his name? James. So, did she end up having peace and quiet? Yeah. No. No? Because when somebody is with you, are you at peace? No. Sometimes. Sometimes, yes. But if you are going in to have peace and quiet by yourself and you have somebody there, is that really what you wanted? No. No. All right. Maple Street. No. So, pause. Give me a minute. Can we have like two or three minutes? Three more minutes? We'll be okay. Okay. All right, Maple Street. There's no doubt where our street found found its name. A gigantic maple tree in front of Jamie Hamlin's house. His nose may run green slime all year, but he shares the stale chocolate bars left over from his family corner store. And besides, like I said, there's his tree. All right, over here. What's the story called? Maple Street. Maple Street. Why is it called Maple Street based on what we just read? Because there's a tree that's made out of maple. Yeah, and where is it? On Maple Street. No, I mean, well, yeah, Maple Street, but what other context clues can we find? All right, uh, 
on grass on the playground. Not on a playground. What name do we see here? Maple. Oh, in front tree. of. In, in front James of a house. Jamie, Jamie Hamlin's Jamie. house. Jamie All right, don't Hamlin's forget about that. House. With my sketchbook and colored pencils, I climb the four largest limbs into my tower, the perfect place to draw what I see. Marianne and Emily swing higher and higher, their hair like two flags in the wind. Or Paul and Carrie O'Brien practicing karate moves before their four o'clock class. From my tower, I can see the whole neighborhood, but no one can see me, hidden by these green and paper leaves creating sketches from a spy tree. All right, flip over to the questions. Go to question 14. Carry over, that was fast. Yeah. All right, Maple Street, what is he doing? On the tree. Uh, He's uh, on the tree and he is drawing. drawing. Can people see him? No. But can he see people? Yes. yes. All right, look at number 14. In the story, Peace and Quiet, when does the resolution of Desha's conflict begin? Okay, the words here that you need to pay attention are resolution and conflict. In the story, Peace and Quiet, when does the resolution, what word do you hear in the word resolution? Um, what word do you hear in the word resolution? When you have a problem, you have to look for a? No, look at me. When you have a problem, there's always a solution. Solution. So the word solution is in there. And then conflict. Conflict means pro problem. problem. Okay, so in the story, Peace and Quiet, when does the resolution of Desha's conflict begin? A, uh, F. When Elisa looks at Desha's journal? No. Does that help her? No. No. So we can cross that out. G. When James finds Desha sitting on a rock? No. Well, maybe. Maybe. We have to remember that he went there to kind of talk to her, right? Yes. Okay. H. When James talks to Desha about how family members support one another? No. Oh, wait, yes. Yeah, because what is she running from? Uh, people. The people. people. She's annoyed. She's like, I don't want to be there anymore. They're loud and nosy and uh-uh. So we'll put another question mark there. Look at J. When Desha Lee learns that James used to play the guitar. No. Mm, not really. Okay. So the reason why Desha was away from people was... To support one another. B, yeah. It, so our answer is most likely going to be H. H. Because that's where she finds support, right? Yes. Okay, number 18, and we'll leave it at that. In the story, Peace and Quiet, why is it important to the plot that James knows about clearing in the forest? I'm going to read it again. In the story, Peace and Quiet, why is it important to the plot that James knows about the clearing in the forest? Okay, let's look at our options. F, his knowledge reminds him of a place he can go when he needs help from a family member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, right? We'll put a little question mark there. Look at G. His knowledge helps him recognize how quickly his sister is grown up. No. We can cross that one out. H. His knowledge makes it possible for him to find Desha and talk to her. Maybe. We'll put a little question mark there. His knowledge leads him to a place that reminds him of Daniel. No. No. Not really. So which one would be our best choice? H. His knowledge makes it possible for him to find Desha and talk to her. All right, friends. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you.
and I hope that you guys do good in your stocking. You may return these things, put them right here, uh, one on top of the other.